Hi, my name is Rama Carl, and I'm the CNC tool steward for Ace Monster Toys in Oakland, California. In this two-part series, I'm going to show you how to use Autodesk Fusion to do CNC routing. This is Autodesk Fusion. Um, it's a very, it's fairly easy program to create parts in, and we're going to get started by first changing our units to inches. And now we're ready to start creating a part. So just to orient ourselves a bit, I'm going to turn on the origin so we can see the axes for our, for our world. Uh, the light bulb here means that something is on or off, so I'm going to turn on the origin. I'm going to open it up, and I can see that if I select the x-axis, the red line is highlighted. This is the x-axis, positive. Green is the y-axis, positive. And z is the z-axis, positive. When we get to actually routing, this, these axes are going to change orientation, but as we build a part, we typically build a part with the y-axis up. So I'll turn that back off, and then I'll start by creating a part. When you start a new project, you often have an idea of how big it's already going to be. And I'm going to create a signpost for Ace Monster Toys. So I already know that I want my piece to be about 22 inches long, 3 inches wide, and about 3 quarter inches high. It's going to be made out of oak. So I'll go to Create Box. I'll choose the plane to create in. Here's the base plane. And then I'll start drawing a box. Now for the width, I'm going to put 22 inches. For the depth, I'm going to put 3 inches. And if I press Enter, then for the height, I'll put in 0 0.75 or 3 quarters of an inch. And that's going to be the stock material. If I zoom out, I can see what this looks like. My goal here is to create an engraving. So I'd like to create some text along the surface of this uh, part. What I'm going to do is go to Sketch and use the text tool to sketch onto the surface. I choose the surface that I would like to draw on and, I, and that should be the top surface here. It will automatically orient the part so that I'm drawing on that surface. I can zoom out and rotate to orient myself better. Now I'm ready to start drawing. I click somewhere to start text and I type in what I'd like the text to be, Ace Monster Toys. We can see that it's rotated here, so I need to rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, make that 270. And then I'd like to increase the size to one and a half inches and change the font. Now I can position this wherever I'd like, somewhere in center. And when I'm done, I'd click OK. And now I go to Stop Sketch to finish the 2D sketching. Now I'm back in 3D mode again and ready for the next step. The next step is to create the engraving by actually making this uh, cut into the material. So what I'm going to do is select the 2D, I'm going to right click and do press and pull, and then set the distance that I'd like to cut. In this case I'd like to go negative a quarter of an inch. If I were to go positive, so if I do shift tab I can go back to a previous command. If I were to go positive, 0.25 inches, it would create something that came out of this work. By going negative, negative 0.25, it will cut into the work. And with that I click OK and it will create an engra engraving. And that's it. That's how easy it is to make uh, engraved text in Autodesk Fusion. Now the last part is just to do the cam so that we have a tool path that we can send to our tool. Cam is about generating the g-code commands that will make the CNC machine run. It's not too difficult but there are a few steps involved. I strongly recommend that you take a look at the document that goes along with this video, The Basics of CNC Routing. To start doing CAM, we go from Model and we switch to CAM mode. The first thing again that we would like to do is make sure that our units are in inches, so we switch over to inches. And now we're ready to start the setup, the CAM setup. We go to the Setup menu and select New Setup. And now we start setting up the CAM. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that our origin is ready for the tool and not for the rendering. So the, the tool may have a different origin system. So what we're going to do is go to Model Orientation 
and we're going to do select Z and X axis, Z axis plane and X axis. So the Z axis is going to be up for the tool. In this case it was Y, but we want to change it. So we choose the top first surface. We say Z is the top surface. Now we've got our Z is correct, pointing upward. And the X is going to be moving to the right on the tool that we're on the machine that we're working with. So I'm going to select the side face on the X axis. Now this is flipped the wrong way. So I'm going to flip the x-axis to the other direction. Now I look at this axis and I notice that it is all, all properly set up for the machine that I'm actually using. The x-axis to the right, y-axis is forward, and z-axis is up. The final step is to set the origin, and I want the origin to be the corner piece of the work. So I'm going to change this stock point and move it to this corner. This is the correct alignment for the origin and axes for the tool machine that I'm going to be using. Now I click OK and I've done the setup. So now I'm ready to start the next step which is to do a pocket cut. Um, this is where you need to know a little bit more about what you're doing because you need to know which tool bit you're going to be using to cut this. If we take a look at this m m project and if I measure the width of the text of one of these pockets, I see that the size is about um, less than half of an inch. So I need something less than this in order to cut inside of here. I'm going to start by using a quarter inch bit. Um, and just keep that in mind when I start pocketing. I'm going to need at least a quarter inch bit or smaller in order to cut these holes. So I'm going to delete this inspection. We're now ready to create a 3D tool path. To do this, we go to 3D, Pocket Clearing. This is the type of uh, cut that we want to make, is to clear the pockets of this material. And the first thing we need to do is select the tool. The tool is, the, is called an end mill on a CNC machine. And there are different shapes for cutting different types of material. Here I'm going to choose a flat end mill, which is going to allow me to cut um, nice sharp corners inside of pockets. I want a diameter of an eighth of an inch, so I'm going to do 0 0.125 to get an eighth inch flat, an eighth in, eight inch bit. And this is a two flute bit, meaning it has two cutting edges, which is pretty common for uh, starting. If you were going to do finishing or something, um, different types of material, you might use a four flute bit. So check the manual that goes with the, the document that goes with this video to get more details on the types of bits that you can use. Um, for now, I'm just going to choose a standard 1 8 flat end mill. You see the, the tool appears there automatically. Um, it sets a spindle speed, and I'm actually going to change this to 1600 because I'm going to run the tool a little bit faster. Um, the spindle that I'm working with runs between 10 and 20,000 RPM, so I'm going to choose this speed. Uh, that sets a cut feed rate of 40 inches per minute, which is fine. The next thing I want to do is go to heights and confirm that the various heights are set correctly. So clearance height is the distance to where the tool will not touch anything. It's a safe distance. The clearance height here is set to be a quarter of uh, 0.4 inches above the work material. And if I rotate the view, I can see these, depth, these heights differently. So the orange here is the clearance height, which is well above the material. That's what we want. The top of the material is zero which is what we want. We want the zero to be on the surface of the material. And the bottom is set to the bottom of the material, uh, which is the dark blue here. So these should be set automatically, but it's good to just check and make sure that they look good. Finally, we want to go to passes. Passes is where we set how this will be cut. So in CNC routing, you don't want to cut all the way into the material completely because you'll probably break the bit. Instead, what you do, especially with an eighth inch bit, is you'll cut away in layers. And those layers are called passes. The, pa the distance between passes determines how much material is cut away at each time. And that here is the maximum roughing step down. It determines how much material is cut in each layer. So I'm going to go here, and for this I would like to set this to 0.125. I'm sorry, 0 0.0625. So I'm doing a sixteenth inch passes with an eighth inch bit. And that's because I'm cutting into oak. So in general, you want the ratio of the size, width of the bit 
to the step down to be similar one to one but in this case because I'm cutting oak I'm gonna make the, the step down even smaller I'm making it a half of the width of the bit and that should be all I really need to change here everything else should be okay once I've done that I'm ready to create a toolpath and all I need to do is click OK and we can see here it shows me the percentage which shows how uh, much time it's done it takes a very quick time just to figure out the toolpath and this is the toolpath it created unfortunately this isn't what I want because we can see these blue lines mean that it's surfacing the whole material and then cutting the pockets and I don't want it to to go over the entire surface I just want to cut the pockets so I need to modify the uh, top of material so that it does not cut the surface so what I'm going to do is right click here and edit the pocketing so I'll go back to, it'll show me the same view again and I can edit things again I'm going to uh, heights and I'm going to set the top height um, to minus 0 0.05 inches just to give a little bit of clearance for the tool to not surface the material. Now do OK again. You can see it's recalculating and now it's created a tool path that does not touch the surface and only creates these pockets. So I can do some other cool things here as well. If I right click on the tool path and go to simulate, I can watch it actually cutting the stock material. I turn off the tool path and I can see what it would look like if it were actually cutting. So that's it. The last step is to export this as G-code so that you can send this, these instructions to the CNC machine. We do that under Actions, Post Process. So Pro's process allows us to write out an NC file, which is the numeric control file that contains the G-code. We choose a, a folder locally that we want to save it. So mostly everything uh, created in Fusion is saved in the cloud, meaning your actual models are not stored on your computer. They're stored um, elsewhere in a data center. But for the NC file, we want to have a local file that we can take over the machine. So we create a local file and that's done just by putting in an, a program name or a number. You may have to put in a number. Uh, it can be anything. Um, but we do have one more step which is to uh, go to the config. And uh, we need to do this because on some machines um, that use Mach 3 and some older CAM software, they're not able to cut circular um, arcs. And so the G-code will, will not be interpreted correctly. So on some machines you may have to open this config file and under here under allow helical moves we set this to false and under allowed circular planes we set this to zero and that tells our, our G, the fusion that the machine we're sending to cannot accept arcs and just needs basic g-code uh, with that we can save this file control s close the config and then we can go back to post process now all we have to do after we've changed our config file is click post and it will create a g-code file. Notice I've set the tolerance here to 0 .001 to give me sharper corners. As I click post it'll ask me to save a file and I'll just save this as an NC or a g-code file. Uh, this is the, contains the actual g-code. After I click save it will show me the code. So on some machines you may have to edit the g-code for it to read correctly. In general, you shouldn't edit G-code and be very careful to do so, but you might have to remove the first few lines that indicate tool changes. So I usually delete up to the first G0 or G-code. When you click, after you press delete, you can just click Control Save to save your G-code. Now that you have G-code, there's many different things that you can do with it. There are several online viewers that let you look at G-code after it's created. So one of these is called Web G Code. You can find the URL for it here. Um, you can just the nice thing about these is you can just drag drop your G Code into the viewer, uh, and it will show you what it's going to look like. And there we have it. This is the G Code ready for machining with a tool. If I rotate around this, I can see that it actually does have the layering, the pass. Remember we have to have passes in order to cut it so we can see there's multiple passes in order to cut this. So that G-code looks like it's ready to go and I'm ready to take it to the machine. 
In the next video, part 2, I'll show you how we cut this on an actual CNC router.